Okay, this is the bag of chilies that I used. It's a, I believe, a one-pound bag. Yeah, 16-ounce bag. It's one pound. Um, this is the guajillo chili. Now, what I added to it was one large white onion, a whole bowl of garlic, and then uh, afterwards I added garlic salt to it to give it a little more flavor. And this here is the outcome of that red chili. I wanted to show you the thickness of it. As you can see there, it coats the back of the spoon. It's very flavorful. And this is what I'm going to use to make enchilitos. All right, well, as I told you earlier, we made this wonderful red chili sauce from some fresh chilies, onion, garlic, and some garlic salt added for extra flavor. Um, this will be the base in what we call enchilitos. The first thing we're going to do is place this down. And somewhat like a lasagna, um, you know, you how you put the red marinara sauce down. This is going to be the uh, red chili sauce. Now, what we also have here is we have shredded cheese. Now, if you're a diabetic, it would be better for you to have a low-fat, no-salt, or low-salt uh, cheese. It would be better for you there. And this here is just boiled chicken. I boiled it with some onion and some garlic, and then my wife went ahead and shredded it up. Now, the introditos. Just admit it, it's slave labor. Yeah, slave labor, that's right. The introditos are actually flour tortillas. And, um, by the way, I wanted to prove to everybody that I did make this chili sauce. This is the chili flakes and essence right here of chili on my white t-shirt. So, just so if everybody's wondering, yes, I did make the chili sauce. We're going to go ahead and lightly warm up a tortilla. It's just like hot Lightly warm it up. You've got to wait for that to heat up a little bit. And then what we do is something similar to a burrito. We go ahead and roll it with cheese and chicken, and we place it right here in the chili sauce. Let me show you the first one that I'm going to do here. <laughs> This is how we're going to go ahead and do this. Over the chili bowl. Now you can do this on a plate if you feel more comfortable. We're going to sprinkle some cheese. And we're going to sprinkle about half a chicken breast. You can do a full chicken breast if you want. Now you can also put onions, a touch of oregano if you want. And we just roll it up. Seam side down, we place it right in there, and don't worry about what falls out. It's going to be pretty spectacular. So in a few minutes, I'll come back when I have this whole entire tray here filled um, with the tortillas. Okay, we're now finished with the enchiladas. Go ahead and take a pan over here. As you can see, we went ahead and tried to make as many as we can. In this 9 by 13 dish, we got a total of, I believe it's eight of these enchiladas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you can use a smaller pan. You can even use the smaller tortillas. And for diabetics, I would recommend the smaller tortillas so that way you get two of each one. As a diabetic, you should only be eating one. And we're going to get ready to finish it off. And what we do to finish it off is we just layer more chili sauce over the enchilada. Now you can also thicken this chili sauce a little bit by adding things like cornmeal or even uh, cornstarch, two, tables, uh, two tablespoons of cornstarch into two tablespoons of hot water, and then just cook it up until it's thick. 
Now, what about flour and water? No, flour and water would be too much for a diabetic. It would add more carbohydrates to what you already have. And then what we do is we sprinkle it with cheese. And you want a generous topping of cheese here, and about probably about a cup to two cups, depending on your cheese amount. Um, remember, you have a little bit inside. Now, what I also do is I also add chopped white onion or chopped yellow onion. I'm only going to do it on a few of these because my children are also eating it and they don't like onion. So much for children. They don't like it. If you puree it into the sauce, though, they won't know. So I'm only putting it on four of them here. And I'm going to put just a little bit of extra cheese just to melt the onion in. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, this was here was eight chicken breasts from the uh, Walmart chicken bag. This was about two cups, and we haven't even used all of it. Like I said, you can use more. But again, if you're a diabetic, you don't want to be doing that. We're going to go ahead and bake these at 350 for about seven to ten minutes is about right. And when we're done, you'll see how it comes out. You want to bake it until the cheese is nicely melted and bubbly. Um, you may see the onions brown or even look burnt on the top. That actually adds caramelization to the dish, and it's actually a little bit better. Like I said, you can also put onions in the enchiritos themselves. And we'll come back and show you what it looks like and how it tastes. Be back later. Okay, the timer just went off on our enchiritos. And we're going to go ahead, if my dog would get out of the way, he's obviously scraping up something there. This is what the enchiladas will look like when they're completed. And yes, you still want that sauce in there. If you want to make the sauce thicker, as I said before, you can add two tablespoons of cornstarch in some cold water or in some warm water and thicken up the chili sauce that way. Now, my, uh, my little 10-year-old girl helped me to make these. Her name's Brandy, and I promised her that she would have the first bite of an enchilada, so I'm going to get one of them here. Say hi, Brandy. Hi. To the camera. Hi. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and you can let these cool after a few minutes. Can you cool them down first? Mmm, I'll try. <laughs> now they're going to be very, very stuck. You can do one of two things. You can go ahead and Take the injury, though. I suggest a big spatula to do this. And then what you can do, if you want, you can get a little bit of the sauce and kind of ladle it over like that. And voila. Of course, you want it to look really nice. You just scrape it off. You can serve this with some unsalted refried beans. And we'll have Brandy take a taste here since she's so excited. Go ahead, try it out. Cut it open. Gently, gently. You need a knife? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can put ground beef in this. I would recommend at least 80% for diabetics. You can also put pork, which is something I don't recommend. Okay. It might be a little hot. It might be hot. So blow on it. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Jeez. You are. Go ahead. Take a lazy. Take a bite. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Is that good or no? It must be good. She's not stopping eating it. Is that good? Yeah? Okay. Well, what? there you go. We've got intranitos done. Um, and obviously, they're a hit. These are very quick to make. As I said, you can use ground beef. You can use chicken, uh, pork. Um, I have not tried lamb or goat or anything of that nature, but uh, it is possible you can also use ground turkey or even fresh shredded turkey. Like after Thanksgiving, this would be a nice after Thanksgiving dish. So uh, if you like it, uh, go ahead and like the video and make sure that you uh, go to diabeticcookbookblog.com for further recipes. And next month, I'll show you how to do the chili.